Okay, brother, I, I invited someone to call me on Skype, someone that thinks he knows the scriptures and was pontificating because he thinks he knows more about the nature of God than the early church. <laughs> see, So we're going to see how well he does. Now, Jonathan, <clears throat> you were chiming in thinking that you know God as much as you think you do when you don't, that somehow if Mary hears, she has to be omnipresent, and that's an attribute of deity. Now, before I show you you don't know the Bible as well as you think, these men that were cited, these were the heirs of the apostles, and they knew the scriptures better than you, and they could recite in their sleep. Are you telling me they didn't know that omnipresence is an attribute of deity, and yet they still had no problem with Mary being able to pray for them? So did you know more about God than they did? Uh, no, I'm not saying I knew more about God than they did. I was just asking a question. No, you weren't. You were criticizing. Well, asking questions is different. So if you're sincerely asking, you're going to get your answer now. Let's see. Because if someone's sincerely asking, I don't have problems answering. Because I, too, was a staunch Protestant. And I thought <laughs> intercession of the saints was idolatry. And I <clears> thought <throat> invoking Mary was idolatry. And I <clears> didn't <throat> change because I wanted Catholics to like me. I didn't change because yeah. I wanted Orthodox like me. I changed because of what the Bible teaches, how the Lord Jesus preserves his church, and what these men and women who are the heirs of the apostles and their successors believe, men that God used to preserve the church and die as martyrs for it. And he mentioned many of them. But I want you to go to Revelation chapter 5 for me. Open up Revelation 5. Now, let's see if you're asking sincerely because I'll know by the way you're going to respond. In Revelation okay. chapter 5, I want you to read verses 8 to 12 for starters. Okay. Do you want me to read it out loud? Yeah, you have to because people uh, need to hear okay. what you're reading. 8 through what? To 12 for starters. Okay. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and you have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. Now pause real quickly before I move on. I'll get back to verse eight in a minute. You see that the Lord Jesus redeemed people from all languages, right? Tongues means languages, not some languages, right? Right. Now, only an omniscient God can understand all languages, correct? Right. John is a creature. He can't understand all languages, right? Right. Okay, good. Now, keep reading. Okay. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom, and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Now, remember and what you said. You were said John is a creature, and he cannot know all languages because he's not omniscient. Only God, being omniscient, can know all languages, right? Right. Okay, and, he's, and John is not omnipresent, right? Right. Now, your answer is going to tell me if you're sincerely looking for answers or you're here just to debate. Read now 13 slowly. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and as such a, as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever. Now, you just said John is not omniscient. He's not omnipresent, right? Right. But you just read he's heard. He heard every creature everywhere on earth who speak different languages in heaven beneath the earth that sees all things in them. How did he hear all of them and know what they were all saying? Well, I assume the Lord gave him that revelation and that possibility. Good. You just He's refuted saying, yourself. Man. Good. So why can't the Lord make known to those in heaven there are people asking for your intercession if you're consistent? Why do you assume Mary has to be omnipresent? No. All Mary needs is an omnipresent God to make known to her Pray because they're seeking intercession, just like John. Now, don't give me a different answer that's inconsistent because I'm going to block you. No, you're you're right. That makes sense. Okay, good. I, I like that. Okay, good. Now you're being sincere. Now I can see. Now read Revelation 5, verse 8 for me. 5, verse 8? Yes. Yeah. 
Okay. Now, when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying. And now, uh, let me ask you a question. Verse 8. What are these four living creatures, 24 elders, doing with the prayers of the saints? Why are those prayers in their hands? I don't know. Okay. Now go to Revelation 8. Revelation okay. 8. Read for me. We're going to read 2 to 5, but pay attention to 3 to 5. Read 2 to 5. Uh, okay. Chapter 8, 2 to 5. So. Yes. Slow. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints. Before you move on, can you explain to me what this angelic priest is doing, not only offering incense on the altar, but he's taking the prayers of the saints and offering to God. What, what is he doing with the prayers of saints? Why has God put him in charge of carrying the prayers of saints to God? Uh, I, that's how God ordained it. That's okay. his order, I suppose. So then what would be the problem with spirit beings, spirit creatures, or believers in the presence of God, being authorized by God, enabled by God, to then carry your request to him? There's nothing wrong with it. Amen. All right, now finish it. Go all the way to five because I got more for you. Okay. Uh, he was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. Okay. And there you were noises, stop there. thundering. Oh. Yeah, eight, you can stop there. Eight. All the way to five. Brother, you can say, because six now sound about the judgment of fall on the earth, tribulation. God is answering the prayers mm -hmm. of the saints who are martyred. But I want you to go to Revelation 6, verses 9 to 11, which ties in with this. And I'm going to give you more, more than one verse, because I've done a series on this, but for your benefit... Because you're saying you're asking sincerely, so I'm going to answer in the spirit of love. Because you're not here just to debate. Uh, Revelation yeah. 6, verses 9 to 11. All right. Verse, okay. Uh, verses 9 to 11. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was completed. Okay, now let me ask you a question. Yeah. These are holy martyrs who are now alive in the presence of Jesus Christ. Then the reason why they're before the altar, notice they don't have physical bodies. They're there as souls, mm -hmm. and yet they're before the altar, meaning that their deaths were accepted by God as a sacrifice for his glory. Did you notice that the Lord said, to them i will avenge you at the right time because there's a number of christians who like you will be martyred when that number is up then i will avenge your blood now mm -hmm. doesn't this prove that the lord can make known and reveal to those in heaven what's taking place on earth and what will take place on earth that's correct because he just told them right so that means now they're aware oh more christians are going to die and there's a number yeah. And once that number reaches, then our Lord will come down. Yeah. Now, let me ask you a second question. Since they prayed to the Lord, Lord, avenge our blood. Do you think after being told by the Lord that they have brothers and sisters in Christ who will be martyred, they won't be praying for them that the Lord preserve them as he preserved these martyrs when they're on earth, seeing that one act of love that Christians are commanded to engage in is to pray for one another? Yeah. Okay, so we got that. Now, go to Revelation 19. And I'm going to get out of Revelation because people, when they don't want to accept what the Bible teaches, they'll say, oh, well, Revelation is apocalyptic. It's symbolism. Yep. You can't. Okay, we'll put that aside. Yep. Even though those same people will run to Revelation to prove the Trinity, the deity of Christ, and other things, the thousand-year reign of Christ. But that's okay because I'm right. going to show you other passages. And, William, sorry that I don't mean to take No, brother, brother, this is fantastic. You're right. In Revelation 19, before you read it, in Revelation 18, Babylon, the great, is destroyed in an hour. God has destroyed Babylon. That's Revelation 18. And the nations mourn at the destruction of Babylon because God has now brought judgment on Babylon. He's destroyed it. And the nations are like mourning and in shock. Now, read the reaction of those in heaven. Revelation 19, verse 1. Start with 1. Okay. 
After these things, I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord, our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. Let me Again, ask you a question. Said, no, you went to two. It's okay. How did those in heaven knew about the destruction of Babylon on earth if those in heaven are not made aware of what's taking place on earth? God made them aware. Okay. So here you have biblical proof that those in heaven can be made aware by God what's taking place on earth because those in heaven rejoice at Babylon being destroyed on earth, which means they must have seen it because God allowed them to see it. Right? Yeah. Okay. Now go to Matthew 18, verse 10. Matthew 18, verse 10. Now I'm going to give you the context of Matthew 18, verse, verse 10. Before you read, just read only 10. Don't go to 11. But before I, you do... Verses 1 to 9, it's talking about little children. And the Lord Jesus is warning people, do not harm little children, physical children, because they're innocent and God loves them and the kingdom belongs to them, as well as don't harm babes in the faith because you can be a little child physically and or spiritually. So the Lord is warning, don't cause a little child, a physical child to stumble. Don't harm mm -hmm. them as well as spiritual babes. Those who are young in the faith, causing them to stumble. Why? Why is the Lord warning them don't do it? Because Matthew 18, 10. Okay. Read that for me. All right. Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that in heaven, their angels will always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Now, you know what he means by that, right? They have angels assigned to these children to watch over them and pray for them. So they behold the face of my Father... And if you do anything to them, they who are before my father will be then interceding for them. So here's my question. How can angels, they're in heaven now because they behold the face of my father. They're there. How do angels in heaven know what's taking place to children on earth? Because God made it possible. Ah, So you don't need to be omnipresent, omniscient. All you need is an omniscient, omnipresent God revealing it to you. So the Holy Spirit reveals it to them and allows yeah. them to even glimpse. Look, pray intercede okay let me give you a couple more luke 15 go to luke 15 okay i got a few more and then if you have questions we'll be more than happy to take it and i respect the fact that you're sincere you're not here just to debate and like oh, i no. said uh, very you. rare brother it's very rare yeah. yeah my policy is someone is asking sincere questions even objections i'll take as much time patiently to lovingly answer but if someone's a troll then i do proverbs no. 26 verse 5 but Go to Luke 15, verse 7. Luke 15, verse 7. Okay, one second. Verse 7. All right, verse 7. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just, person, just persons who need no repentance. How can those in heaven rejoice over people on earth repenting if they're not aware of their repentance? Uh, they wouldn't be able to, but God made it possible. Okay. So. so now, yeah. since Mary's in heaven, Peter's in heaven, Paul is in heaven, all the believers who died in Christ are in heaven. Yeah. So are they aware when sinners repent, and do they rejoice? They, yes, they, they can. Yes, right. Okay, now read verse 10 of that same chapter, Luke 15, verse 10. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. So again, in the midst of the angels, there's rejoicing when they see sinners repenting on earth, which means those in heaven must be aware of what's taking place on earth. Now go to Luke 16. Now I'm going to show you the story of the rich man and Lazarus. Okay. okay. Luke 16. Now I'm going to tell you where do you read from. Verses 19. To 23, I'm going to sum it up. You're not going to read it, but go to Luke 16, 19 and 23. There we're told the rich man was a self-centered hedonist who just lavished, you know, lived lavishly feasting and could care less about his brother in need because Lazarus was in a pitiful state, virtually homeless, had sores that were painful and the do dogs licked him. He was at the gate, just wanted something to eat from the rich man's table and the rich man ignored him. And Lazarus suffered till he died. 
and the rich man lived large, a lavish lifestyle till he died. Then when you look at Luke 16, 22, 23, it says the angels carried Lazarus to Abraham's bosom and then the rich man died and then found himself in torment in Hades or hell. That's verse 23, right? Yeah. Okay, now I want you to read 24 to 25. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. And then what does um, Abraham say in 25? But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. How did Abraham know how the rich man and Lazarus lived on earth? Through the Holy Spirit, I assume. Oh, uh, so you get it. Abraham yeah. knew the rich man enjoyed life, Till the fullest, till he died, and Lazarus suffered till he died. So that means it is a lie that those in heaven, heaven do not know what's taking place on earth. But now it's going to get even better. Pay attention to this. Now read from 27 to 29. Then he said, I beg you, therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded through one rise from the dead. Yes, even though you're at the 31, right? Yeah. It's okay. You, uh, you went beyond 29. You went to 31, correct? Yeah, correct. But that's fine. <laughs> Notice 29 again. Read 29. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Okay, let me ask you a question. Moses came about 400 years after the death of Abraham, and the prophets came centuries after Abraham. How did Abraham know that Moses and the prophets came and that right now on earth, because notice he's saying, your brothers right now have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. He's referring to the Old Testament scriptures because Abraham is aware that Moses and the prophets not only came but left behind writings for the Jews to follow and believe. How did Abraham know all that when that took place centuries after his death? In the Holy Spirit. Ah, uh, so he knew, right? Yeah. Okay, so I can go on and on like this. The whole point right. is there's nothing in the Bible that says those who are in heaven are not aware of what takes place on earth. That's a lie. That's not biblical. I just showed you from the Bible that that's actually the opposite of what the Bible teaches. And I showed you not just from Revelation. I showed you from the Gospels. I can even show you Hebrews 12, verse 1. But the right. whole point is, this Protestant tradition that I inherited is wrong. It's not biblical. So even if you want to ignore the church fathers, you can't ignore the Bible. So if we really love Jesus and we really believe the Bible and allow the Bible to impact our theology, we have to stop this nonsense of assuming those in heaven are not aware of events on earth. That's not true. Yeah. Now, do you have another question you want me to answer? Because that was basically your questions. Yeah, no, um, that was great. Honestly, it's just my misunderstanding of how she could hear all the prayers at the same time from all of us around the world without, you know, having a quality of, that is attributed to God. But if the Holy Spirit can do that yeah. you know, with the prophets and the angels in heaven and everything else like that, then that makes total sense. So there's no real pushback on that point anymore, I suppose. And I, let, yeah. let me share something else with you. In Revelation 5.13, yeah. when John heard all creatures, it wasn't that he understood all languages. Let me tell you what the miracle was. You can speak Swahili. I can speak Assyrian. William can speak Spanish. But the Holy Spirit allows John to understand them in his language. Right. It's just like Pentecost. When the disciples filled with the Spirit, broke out in praise of God, each person heard them speak in his dialect, not because they all spoke those dialects at the same time. It's because the Holy Spirit enabled this person to hear Peter and John praise God in Assyrian. This other person heard them praising God in Afrikaans. This other person... Heard them praise God in Spanish. That's the miracle that the Holy Spirit allows you to hear all these languages in your language. And it sounds the same. Gotcha. So 
go to my playlist on my channel. I have a playlist on Intercession of Saints. I go much more in depth. Now, remember, it's the Bible that forced me to change my position. This is why I laugh in the comment section when people say, oh, 1 Timothy 2.5, as if I don't know that argument. And I didn't use that argument. I didn't change because I wanted to be nice and Catholics like me because my position now vilifies me. There are now Protestants who can't stand me, who think I'm a heretic, that I'm misleading people, and I'm on my way, way to hell. So right. what? This costs me a lot. It costs me a many friends who are now disappointed and heartbroken and think I'm a heretic and I'm dangerous. And I have people who are Protestants warning people about me. But you know what? At the end of the day, I don't give a damn because my prayer has been, and I pray I live up to it, Holy Spirit, guide me to all truth. Show me what the Bible teaches and give me the grace and humbleness to accept it and correct myself when I'm wrong because I want you to be happy with me and I want to delight the heart of Jesus and be pleasing to the Father. I don't want the praise of men and do not allow me to prostitute myself for fame or money. Amen. That's all that matters to me. Amen. Okay, so let that be your prayer. And if it is, you got the answer to your sincere question. And anytime you have any more questions, contact me, brother. I'll answer live. But, but hopefully that suffice for now.